Welcome, everyone. To begin with, I would, I would like to extend to you a heartful welcome as we commence yet another academic year. The corridors of knowledge are once again alive with the echoes of eager footsteps and the anticipation of intellectual pursuit. I cannot wait to start a great enthusiastic year. Let us embrace the challenges that lie ahead and endeavor to make this year one of the profound achievements and advancement. Thank you for joining today in order to understand the guidelines and principles that are expected of you in this academic year. Firstly, I'd like to start off with a quote that I enjoy the most, which states, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. And this is reflective towards what we expect or how we teach our lessons in the NYP. We will begin by informing you, providing tasks and a rubric. We will teach you how to do so. And finally, you will be the person who will perform the task and action in order to properly acquire a specific ATL or a specific achievement. Moving on, I'd like to highlight the main goal of the English NYP. The goal of NYP English Literature and Language is to help students become better at reading, writing, speaking, and understanding English. You also learn to think deeply about stories and poems, understanding different cultures, and express themselves well. This helps you in school and in life by improving your ability to communicate, think, and participate for different ideas or appreciate different ideas. In other words, it is expected that in at least two novels will be covered throughout the year. However, we will be doing different reading tasks throughout each and every unit. In each and every unit, you will be expected to write in order to reflect your opinions and perspectives effectively and efficiently. Moreover, in every other unit, a presentation highlighting your ability to communicate this directly towards a specific audience using the appropriate register style is also essential. And finally, understanding the purpose behind the reading, writing, and speaking is essential through the NYP English Literature and Language. Moreover, this leads to how are we going to teach and what is expected from you. As teachers, we are going to focus on ATL, which highlights approaches to learning. And as students, these are the skills that will enable you to go or to walk the path to success. However, when you look at the cycle, you will deduce that we tend to do this on our day-to-day -day basis. We communicate, we research, we have self-management, we are able to collaborate, and we are able to think either creatively or critically. However, in each and every unit, as mentioned prior, you will be covering at least two ATL skills throughout the entire unit. But this does not mean we shall not be covering other ATL as we go or as we move throughout the entire unit. For example, if we were focusing on self-management, your ability to self-discipline yourself and manage your time effectively to produce an end product, and we might integrate it with thinking, your ability to create an effective product. This does not mean that you shall not perform research using existing ideas and deriving new perspectives and ideas. Therefore, the ATLs are going to be covered throughout the entire unit and more than one ATL is applicable. However, we will focus on two ATLs explicitly and implicitly throughout each and every unit. In addition, not only will we cover ATL, this is a cycle of key concepts. In each and every unit, a key concept will be highlighted as the major umbrella and under it are factors that indicate how will we highlight the key concepts of the unit, which are the related concepts and the global context relating it to real life situations. However, in English literature and language, we will be focusing on 
communication as a key concept, in addition to connection, also perspectives and creativity. This is probably one of the major concerns of students, the assessment policy, and what assessments will we be doing throughout the year. I would like to highlight that formative assessments will be taking place almost on a day-to-day -day basis. For instance, if I ask you a question inside of the class and you answer it, this is a form of formative assessment, as you will be assessed informally and a way to reflect your knowledge and understanding throughout the entire year. So in other words, anything you do is considered a formative assessment, whether an assignment or a uh, answer in a class or even group work is a form of a formative assessment. Whereas the summative assessment is actually the formal form of assessment. It is the assessment that you will be graded from zero to eight. Eight is the highest and zero to one would be the lowest. And it is based on a TSR that you will receive. Each and every TSR will change depending on the unit. However, the objectives and the assessment criteria will remain the same. Criterion A will remain analysis. Criterion B will remain up organization. Criterion C, producing text. And criterion D is using language. However, depending on the writing assessment and the expectation, you will be directly guided into what to write by the TSR, which is a task-specific rubric. Do not worry in terms of the assessment criteria. This will be explained in details as we move on. However, when you think about it, it is not something that you are not already familiar with. All of you have heard the term analysis. The importance of analysis in English cannot be overstated. It serves as a cornerstone in enhancing our understanding and appreciation of literary work. Through analysis, we delve beyond the structure, uncovering characters, themes, and symbolisms that authors uh, weave into their writing. This process not only enables critical thinking skills, but also enables us to interpret text more deeply, fostering a richer connection with literature. Moreover, analysis fosters effective communication, enabling us to articulate our thoughts and, in, and inter interpretations with clarity and precision. All in all, we have done analysis prior. You tend to analyze the role of the character or analyze the theme, the main idea. However, in the MYP system, we will delve deeper into the process of analysis and how can we analyze perhaps a character, a theme, a symbol, context in general, et cetera. In addition, you will learn how to properly organize your opinions and ideas. This is probably one of the most important criteria in my perspective, your ability to uh, create a paragraph that is cohesive and coherent is essential to ensure that the message transfers to the person reading or heeding to you effectively. Moreover, Producing text in English holds immense importance as it serves as a vital mode of communication in today's interconnected world. Effective written communication in English enables us to express ideas, convey information, and connect ideas with a global audience. It is a skill that transcends borders and cultures, facilitating collaboration, education, and business on an international scale. Additionally, the act of producing text in English fosters clarity of thought, organization, and the ability to structure ideas logically in a cohesive and a coherent manner, and to ensure that the text is meaningful and fruitful. Finally, using language is essential as it highlights your ability to use effective language in terms of punctuation, grammar, syntax, and the proper tense. Therefore, using language will be assessed throughout, and it highlights the use of diction that is reflective to the unit. All in all, these are the assessment criteria that you'll be assessed throughout the year. This does not mean that in each and every unit you'll be assessed on A, B, C, and D. For example, if we were to write a non-fictional narrative, then this highlights your ability to organize your thoughts, produce an effective text that is meaningful, and use appropriate register and style, which is using language. You will not be analyzing. 
all in all, it depends on the unit. And this is a new beginning and a new start. And I'd like to welcome you all again to this year. And I'd like to end this uh, PowerPoint presentation with this quote. Language is the roadmap of a culture. It tells you where people come from and where they are going. And I hope this will enable you to think about the quote, what it, what it means, what is the purpose behind it, and what is the intended message. As truly, language is the roadmap that will guide you throughout your life. And it shall reflect your culture. I cannot wait to see you. I hope this is a new beginning and a prosperous year.